Welcome to another episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast. On this episode, I'll be talking about two songs, Venus de Milo, Alexa de Paris, or Alexa de Paris. Not sure which is the preferred version or preferred way to say it, but I'm going to continue to say Alexa de Paris because I like the way that sounds. Both of these songs can be heard in the Under the Cherry Moon film um, as pieces of basically score for the for the movie. Venus de Milo is also the seventh track on the Parade album, which serves as the soundtrack to Under the Cherry Moon, while Alexa de Paris is a B-side, ended up as a B-side to Mountains, which is the second single from the Parade album. So anybody who's been listening to my podcast knows that this is a lyrics podcast so what the hell am i doing recording an episode about two instrumentals because that's what venus de milo and alexa de paris are they're instrumental songs no lyrics one is more of a piano ballad a real gentle you know really beautiful orchestration piano playing well, the other one's more of a, a guitar rocker, essentially. And it's very kind of 80s sounding. Both songs are good in their own way, but they don't have any lyrics. So that that's really... My initial thought was I would just skip past both of these songs. But I really had a... I struggled with that idea of skipping a Prince song, or even in this case, two Prince songs, in his discography simply because they didn't have lyrics. And... Um, well, one would think to yourself, okay, Jason, I get why you don't want to skip them, but what, what are you going to talk about? There's, there's nothing to talk, literally nothing to talk about if there are no lyrics to this, these songs. And you have a point. <laughs> if you're thinking that, you definitely have a point. So what am I going to talk about? I don't think that I'm going to talk a lot here. This isn't going to be a long episode, but I did want to touch on the songs. I wanted to touch on maybe the origins behind the name, the titles that the songs were given, because instrumentals are kind of that weird beast where, you know, since they don't have any lyrics, they don't have any chorus, the title can seem fairly arbitrary. The, The composer, the musician that created the composition, may have recorded it and looked around the room and decided, you know, I'll name this song that. Or maybe they would have named the song based off of an inspiration. And um, I think that's maybe where we're going to line out with the titles of these two songs. I think Prince probably used inspirations inherent to the making of this album and the making of the film Under the Cherry Moon. And those around him, you know, the, the supporting cast, the supporters of his musicianship at this time and just being in just being in Paris frankly speaking i mean these songs were both recorded in the summer of 85 and this was about the time that prince was um you know getting ready to film under the cherry moon the script i'm sure at this point was written or at least it was in a pretty solid draft form the idea of the film was in his mind he had a director picked out, hadn't quite taken over the reins yet, so you know none of none of that drama had occurred at this point. A lot of the stylistic choices Prince made around this time were based off of um, French architecture, French literature, French culture. I think he was really enamored with the country, and in his short time that he spent there, and you know a title like. Venus de Milo. If you want to go see the Venus de Milo sculpture, you have to go to uh, Paris to see it. And then um, Alexa de Paris, that's a, a French name. Just kind of talking about Venus de Milo, one thing I like to do with, or one thing I wanted to do with these songs is talk a little bit about where they, their position in the film, where they show up in the film as, in, in, you know, in the score and what scenes in the film are they used in and for 
Venus de Milo, we don't hear this this song until we get to the song is most famously known for, I would say, for anybody who's fan of Under the Cherry Moon is the scene after Christopher calls Mary's father and you know basically tells him that he loves Mary and Mary loves him and he can forget about her engagement to Jonathan, the man who's Isaac wants Mary to wed for the financial prospects that that presents the Sharon family. And the two of them begin kissing in the telephone booth, and it's implied that they also make love at that point, which would, I think, be the first time in the film that that occurs. So that's, you know, it's a romantic song, and it's it, it fits the mood of that scene, for sure. The song also can be heard towards the end of the film again, when Mary is reading the Honest Man poem that Christopher leaves her in the grotto after he takes off. So there's a few key scenes, two in particular key scenes, where Venus de Milo is used as background music or to accentuate the mood of a more more romantic mood that the film is intending to portray at that moment. Um, Just as an aside, this doesn't really have anything to do with the song that ended up on Parade, but there is another instrumental that is kind of dubbed the Venus de Milo instrumental on Prince Vault. There's a scene that ended up on the cutting room floor of Under the Cherry Moon where Prince's character, Christopher Tracy, has basically a one-sided conversation with the statue. And the, the Venus de Milo can be seen in a transition, but after the love or money section of the film, when when... Mary, Tricky, and Christopher are running around Paris spending a lot of money and showing off. You can see the Venus de Milo statue at that point. Just, you know, kind of to represent, I imagine, Paris, in essence. But this scene that I'm talking about, and there's a a portion of music that underscores that scene, and it was kind of dubbed Venus de Milo simply because it was being used in a scene where the Venus de Milo was present. Not that it has anything to do with the song that we ended up getting on Parade. And and one last thing about Venus de Milo is that in the film, I believe that is the, the name of the club that Christopher works at. You know, his his job, his nine to five, so to speak. He plays piano at the Venus de Milo lounge and how she knows where he works is because he handed her that card that says, you know, Venus de Milo and just roughly translating the card says Venus de Milo at the palace hotel. Um, each evening, Christopher will play for your pleasure. So she knows where to find him on the evenings playing piano. So, I mean, it it has multiple kind of references in the film with the statue, with the place of where Christopher works and plays piano. And just, you know, a very basic representation of the city of Paris and France in general. So now moving on to Alexa de Paris. This is a song that, as I mentioned, is more of a, has a rock feel to it, very guitar based song. And it was not featured on the Parade soundtrack, but it did make the B-side as a B-side to Mountains from the Parade. And while it is a 80s B-side, it did not, it was one of two songs that did not make the Hits and B-sides collection that was released in 93. You know, two songs from the 80s, basically, that didn't make it, didn't make the cut. And both of them were from Parade. Love or Money and Alexa de Paris did not make the hits and b-sides collection so for what it's worth i think it's just instrumentals inherently don't don't have a lo- the same level of popularity as songs with lyrics and catchy choruses so it's just the way it is there's several moments in this movie where you can hear pieces of this song in the background you can hear alexa de paris played while christopher and mary are talking on the balcony at the venus de milo this is after Tricky convinces her to invite him and, by default, Christopher as well, to 
to dinner the next night. And they're, you know, Christopher and Mary are dancing out on the balcony at the Venus de Milo. And, you know, this is the whole, I want to, where he proclaims, I want to take you on a trip to the moon. But then they fight. And then you have the, the punk brat gigolo cabbage head section of the film. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty hilarious. Which, of course, makes her laugh and endears him to her a little bit, I think. she's He's just so different than the kind of guys that she's been dating and so you know that's it's a nice little nice little scene i think that is probably the the scene most most representative of this song in the film i mean literally every song on the soundtrack in the two b-sides can be heard in the movie at some point it's just a matter of uh you know how much of it and how different was it was it a was it one of the versions with the Claire Fisher orchestration or was it just the stripped down version that was included on the soundtrack was it a reinterpretation as we hear some kind of reimagining of of mountains and do you lie in the movie that don't fit exactly how it was presented to us on the on the movie soundtrack uh, Alexa de Perry did have two versions. There was the seven inch version and the 12 inch version. So one shorter, one longer, depending on which copy of the mountain single that you bought. This song was alleged to be named after dancer Alexa Fioroni. Alexa Fioroni is credited in the film as the dancer. And it's widely believed that she is the ballet dancer in the opening sequence of the movie. That's really really the only dancer in the film where, you know, that's the only thing that they do is dance and they would be credited as the dancer as we're supposed to know who that is. So I think logic has told us as watchers of the film and just studiers of of the movie that that's who Alexa Fioroni is, is that ballet dancer towards the beginning of the film in the credits opening sequence. So that's all I really had to talk about with Venus de Milo and Alexa de Paris. I enjoy them both, you know, quite a lot. I mean, Venus de Milo is a beautiful song. I prefer that song over the two of them. I think uh, it's the more timeless composition of the two. And I love how it closes side A of Parade right after the the chaotic ending of life can be so nice you get this really gentle beautiful ballad and it just kind of lulls you into complacency a bit and lull and it's a it's a nice ending chapter if you're thinking of the two sides of parade as chapters it's a great closing chapter and i i i like the scenes that it's soundtracks in the movie a lot so it just it ties into some really kind of touching scenes between the two characters christopher and mary alexa de paris soundtrack's a a really playful scene and also a very memorable scene so i can't fault it for not doing its job there i just i just like the music better for venus de milo alexa de paris is a great song but i think it sounds a little more dated and venus de milo is timeless so that is my take on the two songs, their origins, and their their appearance in the film, Under the Cherry Moon. No lyrics to talk about. I don't have any guests on this episode for that reason. There's nothing that we would really need to dissect. But uh, if you have any additional thoughts on these two songs, the titles, kind of their origins, why did Prince choose to name these two songs, what he did, besides maybe some of the stuff that I've already mentioned, um, I'm happy to hear what you have to say. So get a hold of me at Press Rewind Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can also find me on my Press Rewind Podcast Discord, which can be the link to that is all over the uh, social media sites that I run. So look for it there if you're interested and if you like using Discord. Join us there to talk prints. And until next time, goodbye.